Hey everyone, God bless and welcome to the video. In this video I just want to make a vid sharing how to live your life. And this video addresses adolescents and teenagers growing up. First I want to say that you are beneath nobody and nobody has the right to tell you what to do and to lord over you, to treat you with respect and dishonour. Similarly, we must treat we don't must, but we sh <laughs> we should, eh? Well, we have the choice, and ideally I would really love it if we did treat our children, and I, I offer to you to think about it, that we treat our children and our growing young adults with the highest respect and honour. And we don't shout at them, but we try and understand them and encourage them to trust themselves and to grow up as an empowered, aware, informed, educated in spiritual truth, universal truths, so that they are confident and self-trusting of their own ability to make positive and good decisions for themselves in life. And not only to treat and help support and encourage our youth, our youngsters, our children to do this, but also our friends, family and generally anybody we ever meet in life. In school and children often like adults talk down to them and treat them as if they're stupid or idiots or just with a sense of disrespect as if they are above the teenagers or adolescents. Often it's not only disempowering but it's hurtful, it's sad, it's disheartening, it's disrespectful and there isn't a sense of integrity or, and honour. So I invite you to question how you treat your children if you have any or else how you look upon other people and people who are younger than you. Nobody has the right to disempower you, to, to treat you with disrespect or to lord over you as if you're nothing or as if you're little or as if you're below them. Be it your priest, your, your, um, your lawyer, your, um, your government, um, your parents, your children, somebody older than you, somebody younger than you, nobody whatsoever. We are children of God, so to speak. We are source energy. We are the roots, we are the branches of the tree. We're all source energy, okay? We're spirits from the divine, whatever you want to call it. Nobody, we're all equal. There's nobody above or below. But on this earth, the way it's at the moment, where there's so much light and dark, um, harmony and disharmony, you know, we basically grew up in a bit of a screwed up past. <laughs> and that's not a moral judgment as if it's like bad or wrong or shouldn't be that way. It's right and um, and you can call it good um, and it's meant to be that way. And we knew we were coming down to this world in this way, in our family, in our body, for the purpose of growth, experience, exploration, exploring a team, expansion, personal expansion, for discovery and especially for creation and just the whole experience especially but creating ourselves in the midst of all this contrast so it's not wrong bad it shouldn't be happening but in the midst of all these contrasting elements we we forge ourselves of who we want to be in relation to all of these things so like i said a week ago on facebook what's important really is not how others are being what's important is how you are in response. That is the grand sculptory of life. Forging yourself to be who you want to be in the next moment, the next greatest version of yourself, the next amazing being that you're going to be. And it all happens from what's around you. Like, my God, look at that. I don't like this. I like this. I'm going to gravitate more towards this or less towards this. I have a vision, I have a dream, I have an imagination. So use your imagination of who and how and what I want to be. So this will help you, no matter what the challenge or the hardship, how you respond and deal with it and who you become as a result. So it's in all of this great contrast that we get to become such an amazing being. Yes, life can be hard, but it's amazing, it's magical, and amidst all the hardships, there's the beauty of ordinary daily life. The trees, the grass, the birds, the butterflies, the, every human being, if you treat them, if you see them differently, like first of all, like divine beings, and secondly, like unique, precious, precious, precious children and people, because we are children, don't forget also, we're grown up children maybe, but 
we have that inner child, that vulnerability. And we're all trying our best, but to respect and honor people. And that doesn't mean you have to be their best friend, but do have the respect and honor. So, how you should live your life is not based on what other people tell you to do or how they say you should live, but it's you should do what you want to do. So, for children, teenagers, shouldn't don't go to college if you don't want to. Don't just like get caught up in the system because they tell you to. The system is wired to make workers and to get involved in the medical system where they make trillions and billions. The system is basically corrupt, largely, guys, like, and I'm not saying it's all bad and there's lots of good things in the system. I'm not trying to say to be against the system, don't be against the system whatsoever, but there is a lot of corruption and disharmony and ego, if you want to call it that. <laughs> so. The, tr the remedy, the truth, is to get informed and to be aware so you can make conscious decisions instead of unconscious reactions where you're just sort of like a reactive chemical, like a robot, sort of. You know, being told, you're supposed to respond this way in this circumstance, you're supposed to treat this person like this, you're supposed to do that under this situation. And you're just sort of going around like a blind, like, reactive thing. And we're all learning and growing, of course, and I'm not saying you're either like this or you're not. We all are like this to a certain degree. We have our cultural conditioning and our programming, so I'm not trying to say some people are better than others. It's all okay, and it's all meant to be like this for the moment. But don't forget, what was only meant to be is the past. But the future, while, it, <laughs> while you can say it's meant to be after it happens, the future is open, and this now moment is the moment of choice and possibilities and creation and opportunity. So I personally left college, I, I left school, I finished school and I, I hated school, it just happened to be my life experience. I was sad and lonely and insecure and I had a lot of emotional and mental issues. I hated school for whatever happened, I just never had any friends in school. I had acquaintances but I was sad and lonely, I hated school. I was a little bit bullied, but not really too badly, but I was more just sad and lonely. I hated school. I was very anxious thinking about school in the evening before and going to school or getting up for school. I went to mainstream school. Mainstream school is far more conditioned than other schools. Some other schools like will be a mixture of boys and girls. Mine was unnaturally all one single sex. But I always had like a million friends outside of school, but the way the world orchestrated it, I had no friends in school. so. I had acquaintances, like I wasn't a complete loner, but I found it very sad and hard and I was I was finished. When I when school was finished, I had enough, like I was finished even before school finished. As an emotionally like hadn't my the end of my straw, you know. So then I went to college a year later, I took a year out, and then I left after two months. Then I then I got sick and I was sick for like almost ten years and I was doing nothing, so to speak. I was on my own personal journey of learning and suffering before learning a lot. So what I'm trying to say is I was a so-called down and out or like a bum or like I wasn't there's another story about me, but what I want to say to you, if you're a teenager or an adult, live your life based not on what other people tell you to do or should do, but what you really want to do. Get into what you're interested in, excited about and passionate about, what you're drawn to and what you like and love. If that's dancing, acting, working with your hands is like some some form of like um like a carpenter or electrician or whatever, um a roofer or a plumber. Just you know, there's honor and integrity, it's all about what you do. There's there's nothing worse. There's nothing better about being a doctor than being like a house maintainer maintainer. It's about how you do it and what you like, what you really are really, really, really like. So luckily for me, I never got to do, except for the two months of science and the few, oh yeah, I did two years of something else, oh man. Yeah, 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 that was, I didn't like that either. Fitness instructor and leisure management. It taught me loads of stuff. Like doing all that I didn't like taught me what, to, what I liked or at least what I didn't like. Eventually I just got totally into spirituality. It found me, I didn't even need to find it. So. Just do what you like. If you want to work in an organic farm, do. If you want to work in an ordinary shop, do. You can mix it up, you can do lots of different things. 
Don't be told how to behave. You behave how you want to. We're all entitled to be who we are and how we are. And that's always changing by the moment, of course, as we learn. And as we experience like, pleasure or suffering, we, we get drawn on away certain things. So, Like, I don't tell my partner Sally to do stuff that I do or like, and she doesn't tell me to do stuff that she does or like. We might share some things sometimes or say, hey, do you want to do this or do you want to look at that? We must honour and respect everybody. This is the peace in life, because when you're not honouring and respecting people, you suffer because you're against them and you're agitated and you're stressed. And you have anxiety about collisions and fights and arguments. So what I'm talking about is a deep thing. It's about having a much, 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 much easier life and happier life and more peaceful life. If you want to take your top off in a field like me, do. If you don't want it because you're self-conscious, don't. Or if because it's like an inappropriate place. Because you do have to fit in to a certain degree, otherwise all sorts of disruption will happen. And you'll get yourself involved in energy you're not really interested in being involved in, maybe. <laughs> so, I'll say, be true to yourself. And if you're sad, allow yourself to be sad. If you're angry, be angry. But there's a way of expressing and learning from our sadness and anger. Sadness is you can express that and it doesn't really cause much trouble. But you don't have to lash out with anger. You can learn what it's teaching you. It could be teaching you someone is violating you or, st or stepping over your boundary or someone's treating you meanly or unkindly. And it can teach you to get away from a situation that's harmful or dangerous or a person who isn't good, good for you or loving, nurturing, uplifting to you. So emotions teach us, the thing to do is to learn. Don't get all suppressed and repressed by what society has taught you is wrong or weak or bad about yourself. Love and accept yourself. The inner child within you that's sensitive, allow it to be. Listen to it. Give it respect and tenderness and honour like the way you treat a five-year-old in pain or a child. Be tender towards yourself. Don't be, sh don't shun yourself as if you're wrong, bad, or shouldn't be. This is the greatest teaching, and it's shadow and pain body work or teachings. To not stifle all of your emotions and your truth, but to allow yourself to be who you are in all of your flaws, weaknesses, but they're not really flaws or weaknesses, but I'm just using that word. In all of your ways, flaws, weaknesses, etc., and everybody else, because allow people their humanity and their like mortality their imperfection but we are perfect we are we are how are you are you perfect sally asked me this the other day oh well how would you respond if i said are you perfect <laughs> yeah i said well i'm not perfect but uh, then i went on to say well i'm perfectly imperfect and she was saying yeah i think it's good to say you are perfect and i agreed with her like even though i might sound bad but you explain to someone yeah i'm perfect and in saying you're perfect you're allowing and giving them the demonstration and understanding that they are perfect too, you are perfect, you are perfect. Um, but that's not to say you're arrogant. You know, that's a different thing. Because you are perfect and I'm perfect and we're learning and we're still perfect, we truly are perfect. So love your perfections and your, if you want to call them, your weaknesses or imperfections or flaws. I'm just using those words, okay? We all know what they mean, you know. Sometimes we're intolerant or someone else is narky or cranky or sometimes we just don't know what to do and things happen and sometimes we end up in a mess. Accept it. Learn from it. Change the next time. Always learning and changing. Have peace towards your insecurities, your vulnerabilities, your sadness what society will call weak or bad or tell you you shouldn't be like that. You don't have to hide in the closet, you know. Like some things that were hidden about is like sex, um, masturbation, um, being gay, uh, nudity, cursing, um, um, they're generally some very hung up and delicate subjects that we're very ashamed of. We don't have to be ashamed anymore, okay guys? 
And we don't have to be hurtful or reckless or careless too. Like we don't have to go out running naked on the street, which is like inappropriate and that's not going to do anyone any good. But we don't have to be ashamed of our body anymore. We can let go of that and our genitals. They're beautiful. God made us that way. Or should I say, like the source beings that we are, we know physicality is what we're coming into. We don't have to be against it. We know we're coming here to play the game and to create the life and to learn and explore themes of abandonment or rejection. Feel those feelings, the pain, let them out. Rethink of the pain we've had in the past. But we won't let it out until we re-experience it as it's leaving us. So we have to like allow and feel all the pain and hurt. It's okay to be, we can punch pillows in anger and cry and trash like the punched pillow or the bed or something soft. Like we can yell and scream when we're upset and angry, you know, generally on our own rather than having a big like fit in public. <laughs> So I'll be a little bit humorous now, but it's okay to let all this pain out to our se within our own company. In fact, I did that, and I even used to curse and do a whole lot of push-ups on the street sometimes, like not in a big crowded place where I looked all weird, but like in a kind of quiet place, a bit like this maybe, or even if it was on a really quiet road. When I had the anger surge up within me, I like I let it out, you know, by just doing push-ups, not by. In the past, I used to punch stuff and I hurt my knuckles sometimes, but then I transitioned to being learning about this stuff and doing it, like, letting out all the energy of anger with push-ups and cursing and like like venom at the people or the things that were pissing me off. It's okay to be pissed off, so let go of the suppression, the repression, and learn from the emotion. Refeel the feelings instead of holding them down like a big ball under the water, a big beach ball. It's like hard to hold things down and then it springs up, you know? You can be all Mr. Nice and then suddenly someone cuts you off in traffic and you're like, fuck you asshole! Like you're really pissed off and angry, you know? You want to kill the person. That's like the shadow like coming up. It's the, the beach ball that we've been holding down under the water and it's so hard to hold down. It just wants to come up. So stop judging yourself that it's bad to feel the things that want to come up and let them come up and then that's healing and that's like freedom that's like getting better in life it's like healing and that's the way i'd say just my little thing how you should live your life and um, it's not really how you should but i'm i'm just gonna call this video that probably but uh maybe i won't but it's really about like um ways of harmonious living that could be more accurate but i'm just yeah ways to live harmonious and well and this is such a big hearty topic for me for like growing up with children and adolescents because we're generally shoved around like people are shoved around told what to do disrespected as if you're nothing beneath me below me you know i was going to tell you what to do cause a whole lot of disrespect you can you can't go to the toilet like even have to ask to go to the toilet in certain public schools i don't recommend public schools generally but anyway, maybe some are better than others. You do learn, there's lots of positives too, but I ain't gonna send any of my children to public schools. There's lots of other schools maybe you could choose from, or else just choose the best public school. Like, I don't want to create any hang-ups about, oh my God, you know. Many children love public school. So you don't have to do my way, and my way changes. <laughs> I'm not a god or an idol. When we suppress our own goodness, we create an idolization, a fixation on someone else. Oh, you're amazing, amazing, amazing. But really you're suppressing your own amazingness and beauty and perfection and awesomeness. When we suppress the anger and all this stuff, the, the negative emotions within us, then we, we see others as like, oh, full of judgments. You shouldn't be doing that, you're bad, you're wrong. We get annoyed, we're always judging people, maybe complaining. So they're the two sides of, um, repressing and suppressing the good or the bad so you're awesome forget what anyone says otherwise and check out some of my other videos and and others on the internet but yeah i do welcome to you checking more of my videos i made lots of videos on lots of different topics that are actually practical spirituality grounded powerfully applied to our life and i wish you the best send you lots of love thanks for watching the video thanks for sharing liking subscribing and I truly wish you a glorious day, my friends. A fantastic day, a splendid day. <clears throat> Stay well, healthy, fit, strong. Look after yourself, your body, your mind. Do what you like, no matter what it is, like non-destructively on others, but like watching television programs, whatever you feel like watching. Enjoy yourself harmlessly. Love you. And uh, maximum respect and honor to you, okay? Thanks again and lots of love.